The film begins with a rat caught in a metal cage. A box shows more rats that are also trapped. A woman takes a blender and puts three rats in it. She turns on the blender, then pours the blended rats into a bowl and puts the bowl in the fridge. In another place, a woman named Alice is lying on her bed, sharing her bad dream with Michael, her boyfriend. In her dream, Alice can't breathe because the water turns into hard cement. Michael asks her what she thinks the dream means, but she doesn't know. To comfort her, Michael hugs her and plans a holiday to Italy. Alice isn't sure they'll really go, but Michael promises they will this time. Later, Alice calls a service to repair her bathtub. The next day, Alice is in a program to help her overcome her addiction to love. She admits that Michael, the man she loves, is married and probably won't leave his wife for her. Because of this, Alice's mentor in the program believes Alice deserves better. She should be someone's priority, not an afterthought. Alice knows she should leave Michael, and the program gives her the strength to do so. After a meeting, her mentor advises Alice to stop talking to Michael. She believes Michael is having a negative impact on Alice's life, and this time, Alice should follow through with the advice. Soon after, when Alice returns to her apartment, she hears the sound of water draining in her bathroom. She goes to check it out and finds Shelly there, who has cleared the hair from the pipes. When Alice understands that Shelly is there to fix the maintenance issues, she feels a bit more at ease. Shelly is somewhat reserved and shows Alice a dead rat she found, which Alice appreciates her for removing. Alice deserves praise here. Even though Shelly is self-conscious about her looks, Alice doesn't seem to notice. Alice is truly a kind person. Alice asks if Shelly would be willing to do some house cleaning for her, and they agree on two days a week. After that, Shelly leaves. Later, as Alice is preparing for her next client, the doorbell rings. She finds a large box outside, and inside it, there's a big suitcase. That's quite cunning, Michael. During Alice's appointment, they go to the kitchen to wash off her mask, and Alice's client gets a fright when she sees Shelly ready to clean. Alice tries to introduce Shelly to her client, but the client quickly leaves. Alice then tells Shelly what she wants cleaned, and Shelly starts cleaning. Alice takes a relaxing bath, and Shelly sees all of Alice's makeup on her dressing table. Shelly peeks at Alice through the bathroom door. After her bath, Alice goes to paint her nails and notices Shelly watching her as she cleans. Alice checks her messages and sees that Michael has been texting her constantly. She replies to him simply, and he calls her. Alice answers the call, even though she shouldn't. Michael tells her about all the plans he has for their trip to Italy. He's deceiving her. He convinces her to let him come over after work. This is typical behavior for a narcissist. After ending the call, Alice tries to reach out to Miranda for support, but Miranda is occupied with her children. So, Alice turns to Shelly, who is vacuuming in the living room. Alice invites Shelly to stay for dinner, and Shelly quickly finishes her meal. Alice uses this opportunity to learn more about Shelly. Shelly chooses to share about the burns on her face. She tells Alice about an accident that caused burns on her face and a bite on her neck, but reassures her that everything else is fine. Suddenly, Michael shows up at the door, and Alice asks Shelly to stay silent until Michael leaves. Shelly appears to be a person of pure heart. When she learns about Alice's troubles, she simply states that it's not right. She is innocent. She shouldn't be portrayed as the bad one. After she finishes explaining everything, Alice invites Shelly to stay and watch a movie with her. However, Alice falls asleep. When Shelly tries to leave, Alice wakes up and offers to give her a ride home. During the drive, Alice expresses her gratitude to Shelly for spending the evening with her and is happy to have made a new friend. Shelly tells Alice that she resembles a Barbie doll, to which Alice responds that it's all due to makeup. Alice offers to teach Shelly how to apply makeup, but Shelly asks her to stop the car. Shelly tells Alice that she can walk the rest of the way and exits the car without saying anything else. Alice watches as Shelly walks off into the woods before driving back home. Later, we see Shelly in her dilapidated house, examining a pearl necklace that she took from Alice's apartment. Shelly tries on the necklace and looks at herself in the mirror before going to the fridge to get the pureed mouse. She then goes to a container nearby, unlocks it, and places the bowl inside. She tells whatever is inside to eat and sits down to wait. A woman who Shelly has chained up inside the container crawls over and starts eating the unpleasant contents. It's clear that they're portraying Shelly as the villain. 
While Alice is at the gym, unbeknownst to her, Shelly decides to wear the mask she made inspired by Alice's face and takes a bath in Alice's bathtub. When she leaves, she receives a call from Michael. Michael sounds somewhat desperate. He then asks her to wait three years until his children are in college. Three years in the dark? Alice doesn't think so. While Michael is outside his house talking to her about money and staying for his son, his wife watches him from inside. Alice stands firm and tells him that she needs to consider her own needs for once. She ends the call and goes home. In the evening, Shelly comes to clean and notices a new pack of cigarettes on the table. She questions Alice about why she hasn't quit smoking, and Alice asks her to throw the cigarettes away. Shelly tells Alice that she needs to do it herself for it to have a real impact. So, Alice does exactly that. Shelly tells her that she can now strive for perfection, but Alice feels she's far from it. Alice then takes Shelly to her room to teach her how to apply makeup and promises to prepare a whole bag of makeup for Shelly to take home. Alice is portrayed as an angel in this movie. The film does a good job of developing the characters and their personalities. Alice is a blessing, and the viewer swears that if anything bad happens to her in the end, they'll never watch this movie again. That night, while Alice is sleeping peacefully in her bed, unbeknownst to her, Shelly is sitting nearby. Then, Shelly uses chloroform to knock her out. Just as the viewer expresses their wish for nothing bad to happen, Shelly does something shocking. Shelly is actually creating a mold of her face, which somehow seems more unsettling than if she were to harm her. We then see a flashback of Shelly's past where her mother is trying to make her look pretty. Shelly doesn't enjoy this lifestyle, but her mother insists on her getting ready. After her mother slaps her, she notices a car arriving and sends Shelly to her room. Shelly plays with her dollhouse until the doorbell rings. We are then introduced to Dawn, who gives her $500 for an hour. An hour of what? This makes us feel sympathy for Shelly again. It's also hoped that it's her mother who's chained up in that container. It's hard to imagine how many parents would do this to their children. When we return to the present, Shelly removes the cast of Alice's face and leaves. When she gets home, she creates a latex mold of her face, applies some makeup to it, and tries it on. The following day, Alice wakes up feeling unwell for some unknown reason. She cancels an appointment with one of her clients and then opens the door to find Shelly standing there. Shelly suggests they watch some TV, but Alice says she's not feeling well. Shelly tries to help, but Alice insists she just needs some rest. Eventually, Shelly convinces Alice to let her in and makes her some tea. As Alice is sipping the tea, Michael calls again. Shelly wonders why he won't stop calling. Alice honestly doesn't know and repeats that she just wants to be alone and rest. Finally, Shelly gets the message and returns to her own home. The following day, Alice returns to her Pilates class. Meanwhile, at her house, Shelly is filling a bath while wearing a mask of Alice's face. It's a disturbing sight. It's truly the stuff of nightmares. Shortly after, Alice leaves her Pilates class and finds Michael waiting for her outside. Michael approaches her and they embrace. It seems like Alice is falling back into old habits. They share a kiss and hold each other. It's as if she needs to return to her support group for love addiction. Things seem to be moving fast. They return to the apartment and become intimate, but someone is watching. The next morning, Alice receives a call from Miranda, who immediately suspects that Alice is falling back into her addiction to Michael. Miranda tries to convince Alice to return to the support group meetings, but Alice isn't convinced that she shouldn't be with him. After Alice defends her actions, Miranda decides she's done trying to help her. However, she quickly calls Alice back to apologize. Suddenly, Shelly surprises Alice from behind and uses chloroform to make her unconscious again. At Michael's house, his son asks if they could do something together over the weekend, but Michael receives a text from Alice asking him to visit her. His wife suggests they go look at paint samples that evening, but he tells her he needs to return to work. That night, Michael goes to Alice's place, but his wife secretly follows him in her car. She observes as he enters the parking garage of Alice's apartment building. Michael goes up to Alice's apartment and finds the door already open. Inside, the ambiance is set with lit candles and music playing in the bedroom. As he walks down the hallway, Shelly ambushes him and uses chloroform to knock him out as well. While it's often depicted that only criminals use certain tools, anyone can actually access them. 
In a flashback, we see Shelly's mother forcing her into unpleasant situations with men. Shelly reaches her breaking point and confronts one man. Her mother tries to protect her, but the man retaliates. As he cleans up, Shelly stabs him, but he responds by throwing hot oil at her. In the present, Alice and Michael are seen wrapped in plastic wrap, with Alice holding a knife. Shelly wakes them up and tells Alice that she must be the one to end her relationship with Michael. She guides Alice on where to stab him, but when Alice hesitates, Shelly takes a can of hydrofluoric acid and starts burning Michael's leg. Surprisingly, she didn't pour the liquid slightly higher than his thigh. This method of persuading Alice to end Michael's suffering is extremely twisted. Instead, she poured it onto his private area. When Alice declined, Shelly proceeded to pour the acid down his throat, ultimately allowing Alice to finally relieve Michael of his suffering. Afterward, Shelly administered a sedative to Alice, causing her to fall asleep. Shelly then packed Michael's body into a suitcase and loaded it into her car. As she drove away, Michael's wife followed her until she ran out of fuel. As it turns out, she followed Shelly all the way to her property. Shelly brought Alice into her house and left her in the bathtub, while she placed more remains of mice in an outdoor container. We are taken back in time to witness Shelly and her mother conversing about Shelly's involvement with clients once her skin has healed. Eventually, Shelly musters the courage to inform her mother that she will no longer continue such activities. Shelly's mother threatens to cut her tongue with scissors, but Shelly stabs her instead. Her mother survives the attack. Later, Shelly meets Michael's wife. A man gives her gas, and she questions him about the neighborhood. The wife spots Michael's car and decides to investigate. She enters Shelly's house and hears Alice struggling in the bathtub. Just then, Shelly arrives home and notices the wife's car outside. The wife finds Alice in the bathroom and goes to the kitchen to find something to cut her free. She starts cutting, but they hear someone entering the house. The wife asks Alice if she's the other woman, and after some thought, she decides to help her anyway. Once Alice is freed, they try to escape, but Shelly attacks the wife with a shovel. This allows Alice to run and hide from Shelly. Alice creates a distance between her and Shelly. While running, she sees the lifeless body of Michael's wife. Alice notices the wife's car parked outside, so she goes back to the body and takes the car keys. Shelly sees her and chases Alice towards the car. She catches up to Alice and injects her with drugs. Alice stumbles out of the car and eventually falls to the ground, with Shelly watching as she loses consciousness. As Alice slowly wakes up, she realizes she's wearing the dress she gave to Shelly, the necklace Shelly took from her, and a chain on her ankle attached to the bed. The room is also similar to her own room in her condo, complete with furniture and curtains. When Alice opens the curtains, she sees Shelly standing outside, leading to the conclusion that Alice is now Shelly's captive. Shelly had eliminated everyone who tried to interfere with her and Alice. Now, Shelly gets what she wants, which is complete control over Alice. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.